If you've been playing League of Legends competitively, or any other game for that matter, you're probably familiar with the term meta. You're also probably familiar with the term one trick pony. There's also something called flavor of the month, and I'm gonna talk about all three of those today. But the reason I wanted to make this video is because there's a lot of misinformation going on about meta. There's videos, guides, blog posts, all this saying that meta doesn't matter and play what you're good at. And I'm here to tell you that meta actually does matter. If you abuse the meta, you'll gain more wins, you'll win more games that you shouldn't have been winning in the first place, because you weren't using something that's meta. The issue here is you have to know and understand how to abuse the meta, which a lot of players lack in. So with this video, I hope to give you that knowledge. If you're finding yourself stuck, if you're finding yourself lost, maybe you play like a god and you're still losing games, check out my site, coachbucket.com, and book yourself a session. We can sit you down, get you on your way to winning more games without feeling horrible, without feeling stressed out, without feeling depressed because your teammates suck and you're in the same spot for years. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about here is going to be One Trick Pony, only because that's something that's common amongst everybody. Everyone knows what One Trick Ponies are, and there's a handful of them in League of Legends because it's kind of just how, again, we're taught. We're taught One Trick Pony is the best thing to do if you want to climb and get better, is that play that one simple champion. Now, the reason One Trick Pony in games usually succeed are because they spend a lot of time understanding the ins and outs of a champion. When you know all these ins and outs, there's less mistakes you're going to make on the champion specific level that you know so much, you don't have to think about throwing a, a combo out. You don't have to think about what item builds are the best. You just know. So that allows you to focus more on the game. With that aspect, where you're able to put all of your energy into focusing on the game, which means you get better at the game because you're already quote unquote better at your champion. That's why people say, well, one trick pony is the best thing to do because if you don't really understand the game you're playing, how do you expect to play well anyway? Like how do you expect to climb? How do you expect to win more games? You just can't because you don't understand the game. Now you might be thinking, well, if that's, tr if that's true, then the meta doesn't matter. Hold up, let me get there. So when you one trick pony, the goal of being a one trick pony is to help you understand the game as a whole. No matter what game it is, it's to help you understand the game as a whole. You find a character, you find a champion, and you stick with it so you can focus on the rest of the game without paying attention to your character too much. The second thing I wanna talk about is the flavor of the month. This is something that's generally found out by a player or a group or a team or whatever. And it's not really meta, but, but it, you might not one trick it, but it actually works. As an example, Prowler's Claw Udyr. It's troll, but it worked. So that is something that we know of as a flavor of the month. It's not meta, it's just nobody did it. So because nobody did it, it wasn't really balanced properly. It, it, you know, just nobody knew about it. So it's good now, but it's definitely gonna get patched out soon. Like that's how that works. Flavor of the month is something that is uncommon. You don't really know it's there, but once it's found out, it's usually patched like that because it's not supposed to be played like that or it's not supposed to be that effective. Now with flavor of the month, you have to be careful because flavor of the month champions or characters tend to get patched relatively quickly. There's something that comes and goes. So if you spend too much try time trying to learn that flavor of the month character and that character or champion tends to be really, really strong right now, once it's weak, you're probably gonna underperform like crazy. Why? Because that is something that typically makes something way stronger than it should be and it just gives you freebies. That is what we know as flavor of the month and that is why players tell you to stick with your champion because doing that type of hopping to just get on that bandwagon and then it sucks and then you just can't win anymore because you didn't really get better, the champ just carried you or the build carried you or whatever that flavor of the month may be, you're gonna feel horrible because you're not gonna win. Lastly, we wanna talk about meta. So why is meta actually good? How can meta help you win more games than just being a one trick pony? Meta is something different between each server, between each rank, it's not really stagnant. The game itself has a meta, right? And then you can say, well, solo queue itself has a meta. And then you can say, well, rank specifically has a meta, like like the different divisions, the different tiers have different metas, right? And then you can even say the server just has different metas, right? So you have layers of meta that tends to work, which is why sometimes you'll notice something is hyper meta and like high elo, but if you're a low elo player, it's not gonna work. Or it might be really meta and low elo, but you don't see people playing it that much in high elo and you're a little confused. As an example, Lux. Lux is meta like gold below, I think even plat below. I think plat's pushing it. I think like gold below, but it's not meta anywhere else. Why? Because Lux sucks. <laughs> like She's not that great. She's just annoying. 
but don't take ignoring as being good. Gold players can't dodge skill shots that well. Um, same thing with anything below that, right? These players, if you're golden below, you're lacking a lot, which makes champions like that successful. Another example is Master Yi. Really meta in low elo, but not in high elo. Again, it's the same thing. Fiddlesticks is another example. Really meta in low elo. Why? Because that champion doesn't get punished. Hecarim's another one. The junglers don't punish these champions that just should not be performing well. But if you play them in high elo, they're going to get punished. Uh... ADCs are the same way, mid laners the same way, top laners the same way. Champions that should not be meta are meta in lower elo because they don't get punished hard enough to not even work. So, so when we're talking about meta, you have to understand, again, the meta, right? And so you might be thinking, well, how do I know what's meta if everything is different, if there's different metas everywhere? How do you know specifically what meta is the meta that I should be playing so that way I can win more games? Now, this is crazy because you could do two things. You can do thing number one, which is play what's meta in your elo, and then once you're out of that elo, swap to the next meta thing. And once you're out of that elo, swap to the next meta thing. That works. You can do that. It's a lot more swapping than like the normal meta, which would mean you're basically playing the meta for like the whole barrier, and that doesn't tend to change until like a few months. So, you know, it's a little bit different. I would recommend that you play what's meta for your elo. So depending on how your elo works, play what's meta. As an example, lower elo games tend to be a lot longer. So you should pick meta champions that do really well mid to late game because the games do not close that quickly. If you're like a diamond player, a master player, a grandmaster player, you'll need to play more early game meta champions because your games tend to close a lot faster. Now I'm not saying if your one trick is an early game champion in low elo, you shouldn't play your one trick. And if your one trick is a late gamer in high elo, you shouldn't play your one trick. It's not really saying that. What I'm saying here is meta champions tend to allow you to do things because they're so well-rounded. They can deal with every situation. If you're a one trick, you have to learn how to deal with the situations, even the hard situations, right? But if you play a meta champion that's good at everything, you don't really have to figure out how to get over those hurdles. The time that I recommend you play a meta champion are gonna be the times where you feel like you have nothing else left to learn. Now, this is something that is probably gonna be controversial because you never really truly mastered League of Legends. This is just not possible. Nobody has, doesn't matter who you are. If you're Faker, you haven't. Like Faker will be the first one to tell you he hasn't, right? If you're Dopa, you haven't. There's always more things to learn. But, but if you really feel, well, I'm a gold player, I should be platinum, I'm way better than this, play a meta champion. And if that is the case, whatever hurdle that you had, that meta champion will fix that hurdle for you. But again, you have to know if it's specifically that or you're just not playing to standards. That is going to be how you abuse meta. This is why you'll typically see more meta hoppers in high elo because in high elo, it's very, very hard to improve because the, the margin of improvement is very, very small, right? Like, like the things that you need to improve on in high elo are so small that unless you have a coach, it's really hard to tell you what it is. Whereas if you're in a lower elo, well, maybe I just am really bad at pathing. That's pretty obvious, and you can fix that on your own, or again, grab a, co grab a coach and you can fix that. But it's more blaring, right? Where like high elo would be like, well, trade patterns are a little worse. Well, then, like, it's a very small thing that's very impactful, but it might be really hard to figure that out. So you just play a meta champion that just does it for you, that just always automatically wins those trades. So let's recap here. You have one trick ponies. These cha these players play this, the same character, same champion, and that allows them to learn more and focus on the game itself rather than focusing on the champion. You have the flavor of the month. This is something that's usually really busted until it's fixed. Pretty simple, but once it's fixed, if you're deciding to be a flavor of the month player, um, once that build is fixed or once that champion is fixed, you're probably not gonna have a good time and you probably have what we call inflated elo. You're in a rank that you don't deserve to be because you got really kind of boosted by the champion or the build that was just ridiculous. And the third thing we have is meta. And meta is gonna be different based off the server, based off the rank. You know, again, the high elo, low elo thing, the fast, the games, the slow games. Like if this is all coming into play in meta. But if you go ahead and use meta to your advantage, Use it because you feel like there's nothing else left to learn. If you're still not climbing or winning more games, even though you're playing the meta, which is the best at the time, that goes to show you there's more for you to learn and that the meta isn't really gonna help you. So you should go back to one tricking and figure out what it is. This is why players tend to tell you to, to one trick. 
But I'm telling you, if you learn how to abuse it, if you really feel like you're stuck, but you are good enough and you know everything you need to know to get to your next rank, play meta. You're going to realize it's going to change your life. I've had students like that. I've had one tricks that would play a really bad champion and we'll work together and they'll climb. But I've also had students that were like, I don't want to play this champion anymore. I'm not winning with it. What can I play that's meta? And then we'll have them pop on that meta and they start climbing like that. And it's like, wait a second. It's like, yeah, sometimes your champ does hold you back. But again, you have to be sure that's what's happening. Because I was coaching that player, we knew it was just the champion. It wasn't the fact that they didn't know enough. We've been, you know, working for a couple of weeks. So obviously at this point, you know, he figured, let me just try a new champion. And once that happened, once we got him situated with a champ that's like his main, he was easily able to adapt and then he was easily able to climb. So that's how you abuse meta. I hope this video helped. I hope you guys understand more about one tricking more about flavor of the month and more about meta. If you guys are interested in coaching, coachblaker.com is where you want to go. Again, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling hopeless, if you're really feeling like you're doing everything you can and you are not capable of getting to your main rank or you're not capable of climbing past that rank, book that session. It's a very short session and you can be on your way to winning more games way faster than wasting 200, 300, 400 games in the same spot. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, you know what I always say. Thank you for what? Approaching this like a coach. Thank you.